name of Jesus is greater. The name of Jesus is stronger. The name of Jesus is high above all things. Let's magnify Him today. The name of Jesus is bigger. The name of Jesus is power. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is higher above all things. There's just something, hallelujah. And there's just something about the name of Jesus there's just something there's just something about the name of Jesus the name of Jesus brings healing hallelujah the name of Jesus brings healing of Jesus brings freedom the name of Jesus is high above all things Amen, Hallelujah the name of Jesus is big, yeah, more than conquerors we are the name of Jesus has saved Of Jesus is high above all things. Hallelujah. There's just something about the name of Jesus. There's just something about the name of Jesus there's just something about there's just something about the name hallelujah of Jesus there's just something about the name of Jesus Jesus' name above all names. Jesus' name above all names. Sheila, one who takes all pain. Savior, prison from the grave. Your name is Jesus, Lord over all. Jesus' name above all names. Jesus it's same on high Sheila one who takes all pain your Savior reason from the grave your name is Jesus Lord over all Jesus let's sing Jesus 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 no other name, no other name but Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No other name, no other name but Jesus. Oh, we lift your name on high, Jesus. This day, oh God, let your name be glorified, be magnified. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 there's no other name, what a name but Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 
No other name, no other name but Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No other name, no other name but Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's no other name, no other name but Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Magnify His name today. Hallelujah. We glorify Him. Hallelujah. He is the living Word and He is alive in our midst. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Welcome, hallelujah, into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're gathered in this day. We're gathered in your name. Calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. Amen. Hallelujah. We've waited for this day. We're gathered in your name, calling out to you, Jesus. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason, God. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. Your mighty river flowing from our heart. And feeling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. Let your mighty river flowing from our heart. And feeling every part of our praise. Your presence in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face, looking to the skies, descending like a cloud. You're here with us now, God, unveil our eyes. Your presence, your presence in this place, your glory on our face. We're looking to the sky, descending like a cloud. You're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason, God. You're the reason we're cheering. You're the reason we're saved. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, your mighty river flowing from our heart and feeling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, your mighty river flowing from our heart and feeling every part of our praise. Oh, show us your glory, God. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, God. Show us, show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power.
Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us your glory, God. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, God. Open up the heavens. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. Your mighty river flowing from our heart and feeling every part of our prayer. Oh yes, God, open up the heavens. We want to see. Open up the mighty Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, your mighty river flowing from your heart and filling every part of our Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, your mighty river flowing from the heart and filling every part of our praise. Flowing from your heart, flowing from your heart and filling every part of our praise. Flowing from our heart. Flowing from our heart and feeling every part of our praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The river is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, let it flow through us. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. We see that God, you are moving, God. Hallelujah. And here we see that God, you're moving a mighty river through the nations, and young and old will turn to Jesus. Fling wide to heavenly gates, prepare the way for our reason, Lord. And we can see that God, you're moving. And we can see that God, you're moving. A mighty river through the nations. And young and old will turn to Jesus. Fling wide to heavenly gates. Prepare the way for our reason, Lord. And here we see that, God, you are moving. And here we see that, God, you are moving. A mighty river through the nations. And young and old, hallelujah, will turn to Jesus. Fling wide to heavenly gates Prepare the way for our reason, Lord Do you feel the mountains tremble? Hallelujah! Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you share the oceans for? 
when the people rise to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. Did you feel the people tremble? Did you hear the singers roar? When the souls began to sing of Jesus Christ, our saving one yes god we can see that you are moving and shall we see that god you're moving a mighty river through the nations and young and old will turn to jesus fling wide you heavenly Prepare the way for our reason, Lord. Open up the doors. Open up the doors and let the music play. Let the street resound with singing. with songs that bring your home and songs that bring your joy dancers who dance upon injustice open up the doors hallelujah open up the doors and let the music play let the street resound with singing and songs that bring your hope and songs that bring your joy with dancers who dance upon it just and till we see and we can see that God you're moving and we can see that God you're moving river through the nations and young and old will turn to Jesus fling wide to heavenly gates Prepare the way for our reason, Lord. One more time, let's sing. And we can see that God, and we can see that God you're moving. A mighty river through the nations. And young and old will turn to Jesus. Fling wide to heavenly gates prepare the way for our reason Lord fling wide to heavenly gates fling wide to heavenly gates prepare the way for our reason Lord hallelujah one more time fling wide Fling wide to heavenly gates Prepare the way for our return, Lord Hallelujah Be lifted up, O oh, gates of heaven Hallelujah Oh, let the gates of our mouth to welcome Him Hallelujah 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 Great is Your name, God Hallelujah Hallelujah, flow through us this day, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, flow like a river, God. Hallelujah. 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 There are gates, hallelujah, that God put around us. And when we 
speak, the gates open. Hallelujah. And the river of God comes in. That is why it's so important. Hallelujah. We bring praises to Him. We worship Him. Hallelujah. Because we must open the gates of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And let heaven come down as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Let the worship in heaven flow through our music instruments and our mouth and our lips too. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing the splendor of our King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As it is in heaven, let us, let us worship Him. Hallelujah. The splendor of the King. Hallelujah. Clove in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He corrupts himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice. And trembles at his voice. Amen. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? All oh, will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God? How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, oh sing how great, how great is our God, H to H, H to H. He stand, hallelujah, Alpha and Omega, and time is in His hands, from beginning and the end, beginning and the end. You're the God, He three in one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb. The lion and the lamb. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? Oh, sing. How great, how great is our God? Let's sing the splendor of His majesty again. The splendor of all, the King is God. Your clothe in majesty. Let all the earth. Yes, God, we rejoice here. All the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Yes, God, darkness cannot o- co- overcome you. Hallelujah. The lion and the lamb Embers at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God Oh, we we'll sing How great, how great is our God How great is your God Yes, how great is our God Sing with me How great is our God Oh, sing how great How great is our God Name above all names, hallelujah above all names you are worthy of all praise yes my heart will sing how great 
is our God name above all names you're the name above all names you are worthy of all praise and my heart was saying how great is our God how great is our God sing with me how great is our God oh sing how great how great is our God how great is our God sing with me how great is our God all will sing how great how great is our God hallelujah Oh, we magnify your name, O oh God. Name above all names, hallelujah. Oh, all shall bow down. Every knee bow down to your name, God. Hallelujah. Oh, every sickness, every disease, every sin, every darkness, they bow down to your name, O oh God. Yes, darkness cannot comprehend. Darkness cannot overcome your name, O oh God. The name above every other name. Hallelujah. Above all powers. Hallelujah. Above every nation. Above all kings. Oh, lift his name on high today. Hallelujah. Name above all names. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, God, even us, this day we have to submit to your name. Hallelujah, because there's no other name, no other name but your name. The name of Jesus is greater. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is stronger. The name of Jesus is higher above all things. Amen. Hallelujah. Magnify Him today. The name of Jesus is bigger over every depression. The name of Jesus is power. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is high above all things. There's just something about the name of Jesus. There's just something about the name of Jesus hallelujah the name of Jesus brings healing the name of Jesus brings healing the name of Jesus brings health. the name of Jesus is higher above all The name of Jesus is victory. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus has saved me. Thank you, Jesus. The name of Jesus is higher above all things. There's just something about the name of Jesus 
There's just something about the name of Jesus. There's just something about your name. There's just something about the name. Oh, yes, God, you move in us, oh God. There's just something about. Oh, your name, God, is the truth that will set us free, God. Jesus. Jesus' name above all names. Jesus' name above all names. Your Sheila, one who takes all pain. Savior. Reason from the grave, your name is Jesus, Lord over all. Jesus, name above all names, Sheila, one who takes all pain. You are Savior, reason from the grave, your name is Jesus. Lord over all, let's sing Jesus, 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 Jesus. No other name, no other name but Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No other name, no other name but Jesus. Jesus, 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 no other name, no other name but Jesus, 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 no other name, no other name but Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, no other name, no other name but Jesus, 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 no other name. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's just something about the name of Jesus. There's just something about, amen, hallelujah. The name, hallelujah, the name that must be worshipped. Hallelujah. There's just something about, name above all names the name of Jesus hallelujah let's worship the name of Jesus this day hallelujah hallelujah oh yes God hallelujah name of Jesus oh yes God we worship you Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah, say de de ya na na na. Worship Him, Hallelujah, say de 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 ya na na. Jesus, Hallelujah, Jesus, we worship You. Oh, You are crowned with many crowns, Hallelujah. You are the Lord of all. You are worthy of it all, O God. Oh, Jesus, name above all names. Hallelujah, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 No other name, no other name but Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, no other name, no other name but Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus. No other name, no other name but Jesus. 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 No other name, no other name but Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God, let your name be magnified and glorified today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are bigger than everything, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bigger and stronger than every medicine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We stand in awe of you. Hallelujah. The same yesterday, today, and, that God, and forever, God, and the days to come, God. Hallelujah. The same burning bush, hallelujah, that we can encounter, hallelujah, today, hallelujah, as we stand before you, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We say that God, let this place, oh God, be your holy ground, hallelujah, hallelujah, for you to move, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God, let us, God, take this presence, God, back to our homes too. And wherever we go, hallelujah, let it be filled, God. Let every place that we go to, God, be filled, God, with this awesome presence of Jesus, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we worship him. And all God's people say, amen, hallelujah. hallelujah. Be seated, hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. As we come before uh, the Lord's table, again we want to consider the all important issue of the the great hindrance in our Christian life, and that is sin. For sins, as what uh, Pastor Kenning has mentioned in his worship, a wonderful worship, there's always these gates, the gates which needs to be open, and gates which are closed basically means to say we are robbed ourselves of the blessings that come and why do we how do we rob ourselves of the and when we are not in the presence of God and when we are not standing on holy ground and we have robbed ourselves of the blessings that come and this issue of sin needs to be dealt with can we look at first Matthew chapter 26 verse 28 This talks about the dealing of our sins. It tells us that for this my blood of the new covenant, which is said, shed for the many for the remission of sin. I repeat, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. And Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22 tells us, Hebrews 9, 22 tells us, that according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission, no remission of sin. And so we remember back that uh, in the Old Testament, we, we read that, uh, you know, in the, in the altar, when there's a shedding, when there's a, before the altar, there's an offering or the sin offering, okay? And the presence of God was hidden behind, okay? And hidden behind the Holy of Holies, probably a curtain separating man and God, the presence of God, at least one meter thick, okay, from top to bottom. And we read that at the cross when Jesus died, the curtain that was about three, one meter thick was torn in two, signifying that we can enter the presence of God. And this morning we come to, to remember the act that Jesus went through, that through his act, through his uh, willingness to go to the cross, to the shedding of his blood, there is remission of our sin. And 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 25 to 26 tells us, 
that in the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. This verse tells us in verse 25, do this, uh, okay, as often. That means to say, there is no restriction, no, no limitation how often we can do it. We are supposed to do it as often. Because sometimes we don't realize that. I know of people who also do it daily, and it's a wonderful thing, weekly or okay, bi weekly. But the point is that the Word of God exalts us to do it as often. And each time we have sinned, we come back, we remember the act that Jesus has gone through. And through his obedience, going to the cross, through the shedding of his blood, there is remission of our sin. In other words, the gates of heaven has been opened to us. And this morning, we want to uh, can be uprising and we want to remember the act that Jesus went through for us. That through his obedience, we have this gift of salvation. Father, I just thank you and want to honour you, O Father for the gift of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, who obediently went to the cross, O oh God, that through His obedience, going to the cross, willing to die on the cross, dying a shameful death, oh Father God. One that is so unimaginable, but because He went through faithfully, He died for our sins, and through His shed blood, our sins has been cleansed. The door of heaven has been opened, and today we want to remember uh, this wonderful act, O oh God, that through the shedding of His blood, through the remission of our sins, O oh God, the doors of heaven, the doors of blessings has been opened to us. No more shall we be slaves to, to uh, depression, illness, fear, and death, O oh Father God. There's no, we do not fear the, spirit, the, the physical death, but we fear the spiritual death and through what Jesus has done for us. This matter has been dealt with. So today, even if we take of this communion, we don't want to just be merely a bi-monthly bi issue God, matter. We want to take it as often as we can, remembering your act, oh God. We want to come, oh Father God. We know that, oh Father God, that uh, as we come, oh Father God, you are pleased, oh God, with our with our presence, oh God, we are, we are pleased with our action and we take it gratefully, oh Father God, knowing that, oh Father God, this act needed to be done only once, once for all. Jesus has done it all and we want to take this and remember that Jesus has done it all for us, oh God, and we take this as an act of gratitude, oh God, unto you. Let's take this communion together and drink of the cup. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful act and we count it as a privilege and honour to be able to come knowing that since as Jesus died for us we need not go to the cross ourselves rather our sins have been dealt with the doors of heaven has been opened and we stand O oh Father on holy ground thank you Father for your for this privilege and honour in Jesus name Amen What a wonderful name. What a wonderful name we serve. What a wonderful name we praise. The name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus who is above everything. He's above our anxiety. He's above our depression. He's above sickness. He's above everything. And so we want to praise the name of Jesus. And we need not succumb to any of the things that the devil puts upon our lives, but we want to overcome by the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, we command every disease to go from our bodies in the name of Jesus. We command every depression to go from us in the name of Jesus. We command every pain to leave us in the name of Jesus. We command skin disease and skin problems to leave in the name of Jesus, and we declare the victory of Christ upon our lives. We declare the healing of Christ upon our lives. We declare Jesus into our lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We need to proclaim the word of God. We need to proclaim the name of Jesus over us in the name of Jesus. 
and we declare us, all of us free from every disease, from every pain, from every anxiety, from every depression in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a clap offering and appropriate it for our lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus above all names. He's the name above all names and he reigns forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's so good to be back home. And we want to welcome every one of you into the midst of us. We welcome our children who are back. Samuel, we have, um, who else? We have uh, Sharon and Darren. Yeah. And we have Evelyn and Lau from Batu Pahat. We have Mercy, Joanne, John and May. They are visitors from Ipo. In a minute, I ask you all to stand. We have um, Angie, all right, Angie, who has driven our guest speaker uh, from KL to here. Uh, in a minute, Pastor Ong will introduce the guest speaker to us. And we have in the, our midst, um, for the first time also, including Angie. Henshin and Kui Min. All right. Can all of you stand? And we want to welcome all of you. Uh, and we're so happy to see you. And the rest of you, why don't you get up from your seats and go and greet one another and bless each other, one another. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, we, I guess you are all you all had a good time with family members over the Chinese New Year period and we are back to work and to the normal things of life. But things need not be a routine, okay? Every day is exciting when we have Jesus in our lives. And so um, we want to continue to the work of the Lord and um, let us look at the announcements that... Uh, we want to take note of prayer is always something that we need to be persistent in and praying for the government is one of those things are you glad that we have a unity government under Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim yes he is he is truly trying to do things that are right and he needs the support of all people, mainly our prayers, that he will get the support, that he will also have the strength, the boldness to do what is right. And so our prayers matter very much, all right? Uh, because the prayers of the church, the prayers of God's people will cause a transformation in the nation's direction and in the, na in the nation's uh, history. So continue to pray for our government and we're already seeing things happening where corruption is being curbed or reforms are being implemented to curb uh, such corrupt practices and we need to continue to pray. Will you continue to pray with us for the progress of Malaysia? Will you do that? Yes? Yes, you have to be committed to, to that, all right? Um, cell meetings will be on this week. We had a long holiday. And so those who are still not in your cells, please continue to go to your different cells. And those who are new, please make yourself uh, available, okay? Um, Morning, all the prayer sessions are on, and so do come for your for our prayer meetings. And um, I want to stress upon the memorization of scriptures. I was for four Sundays. I was in this influencers church in Adelaide, and Pastor Ong knows about the church very well. It is a very dynamic church. Who, that believes in miracles, that believes in um, getting people and uh, evangelization and so on. 
And yet, in spite of that, the basis of all their teachings, the basis of all their, uh, their miracles are based on the word of God. And Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night, and you will find your way prosperous. All right? How can we meditate on the word of God if we do not have the word of God in our hearts and in our lives? We need to saturate the word of God in our lives. And so for four weeks I was there and yesterday I was sharing with the prayer group that the emphasis was on the word, that we need to be grounded in the word. We need to read the word of God every day. And reading the word of God is one thing, but also the memorizing of scriptures is another how can we meditate on the Word of God except we have the Word of God in us? And it is, it is very good if we read the Scriptures every day, but we are asking you to memorize one passage of Scripture or two passages of Scripture a week. And this will help us to be strong in the Lord when we face challenges that come our way. We will never know what happens, but when we face challenges or testings, the Holy Spirit will draw the Word of God from us, and we can rely on the Word and be strong and to stand strong in such situations. So, I want to encourage us all. We started very well, but some of you have lapsed in the word, in the memorizing of the verses that we have. And so can I encourage all of us as a church together to memorize the scriptures that is given to us for this week. It is found in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 12, 1 to 3. Can we all do that together? If we can do it together, one passage of scripture or two passages of scripture a week, we will have many in our hearts and it will stand us in good stead when trying times come our way. Okay, can you please be committed to do that as a church together? Thank you. And now I invite Pastor Ong to um, introduce our speaker and the rest of it. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Mei Cheng. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to extend a special welcome to Hansen, Han Shen, and uh, Kui Min. I'll just uh, say a little bit about them. Thank you very much. Uh, because it's, it happened just very recently, just three days ago, I think. Uh. Uh, yeah, Han, Han Shen's sister, uh, Alice Lam was in, uh, at, uh, in uh, Melbourne. She contacted uh, Elder Chairman Elder Liu Hoi Fu of FGAKL. And so Liu Hoi Fu contacted me la, to tell me to go and visit them under the instruction of the sister. And so I did. La. I, I found that uh, Han Shen was very hospitable. He was there, all ready to receive uh, Salcom and myself. So he went there to uh, share more about Christ to them, and then to pray for them, for the mother in particular. Uh, the mother has some uh, ailment, and so we pray for her. And of course, uh, I was not good enough in Cantonese to do that, especially for the mother. So I took Sao Kam along, who is really good. She's really good in Cantonese. Of course, she's not here. She's in our Chinese church. And uh, she did the praying and all that. And I was we were very glad uh, to see the father and mother responding. Of course, I must say that uh, when we begin uh, in the area of uh, dealing with matters 
from the point of, of view of prayer, sometimes one prayer doesn't solve it all. It doesn't. So there may be other matters. So Alice told me, you see, that your mother had some other attacks, you see. So I told Alice that not to worry, Salkam and myself will go again. We arrange another date with you, suitable day, and then we go and pray for your mother once again. We address uh, some of the detailed issues. Uh, we thank God for uh, what God is doing in the life of their family. And Alice is very excited. She wants to come back. She's coming back from Melbourne to visit the, the family. And she said she will be very keen to contact me and uh, get to know me. I, I, I don't know Alice myself personally. I don't know her. But I know all the ones she, she knows. You know, all the, the others, uh, they were all leaders of FJKL. They are, FJKL is a big church. And uh, I know them very well. All the leaders, I know them well. Uh, Liu Hoi Fu and uh, this uh, Roland Xiao and Evelyn Xiao. And then uh, Ross, uh, who is the uh, treasurer of FJKL who was uh, the treasurer, also migrated to Mel Melbourne, in FGA Melbourne. Actually, uh, it's uh, wonderful how God worked in our church, uh, uh, so that uh, from one church, uh, FGA in KL, it's straight to until it's all over the world. I've been, been to FGA Melbourne to speak. I've been to FGA Vancouver to speak. I've been to FGA Sydney to speak. I've been to FGA Perth to speak. I, I found... It's fantastic uh, how some of our members, they travel elsewhere and then the churches are started. Of course, we are, we are not superior to any church. Uh. We, are, we, are, we stand equal, equal with the other churches in Ipoh. There are many churches in Ipoh. We thank God for them. They are good churches. And uh, I think the people who attend those churches are doing well. We want them to do well, even as we want ourselves to do well, to bring glory to the name of the Lord. Jesus is what matters. Jesus is whom we believe in. Jesus is what matters. And what Mei Cheng said about Jesus, what Mei Cheng has proclaimed in the mighty name of Jesus, they are absolutely true. You believe it, you will ex you'll see the works of God done in your life. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So there's one other issue uh, that is in my heart. Uh. You see, uh, uh, sometimes uh, because of COVID, uh, some of our members don't come. So we who are shepherds, uh, as an, an elder or pastor, we reach out to them. Uh. So there's one member in our church didn't come, uh, Sandy Wong. How many of you have seen Sandy Wong? None. Uh. I mean, she has not been coming. Uh. But then she came to my house two days ago. And then when he came into my house, uh, I realized that the car parked outside my house. I went out. I found that she couldn't get out of her car. She was in excruciating pain, excruciating pain. And then when I went out to help her to get into my house, sit down also excruciating pain. Uh. And then later on when I helped her to stand, also excruciating pain, uh, like crying. Uh, because uh, her vertebra, vertebra, uh, sorry, I may not get it right here. There are three or four vertebrae. Number two, number three, number four, number five. They are affected, uh, out of place, and there's a strong compression on the nerve, uh, bringing a lot, a lot of pain, extreme pain. Uh. Of course, I, I did pray for her, uh, but nothing happened. Uh. But she has already gone to see the doctor and the doctor has told her that she has to undergo an operation to put back the vertebrae into, into place. Otherwise, uh, she cannot leave. So she already saw that and then she told me the, all the details of it. I, I saw I, my heart go out to her. I wish I, I can immediately bring about a miracle, which I can't. It's only God can bring about miracles. We pray to Him. But in this case, uh, we have to face the problem squarely. 
I told her, I asked her, what can I do to help you? So he told me, there are two doctors uh, whom he had, she had uh, consulted. One is an uh, Indian doctor, uh, Ravi, and another Chinese doctor. The Indian doctor is willing to operate and put the vertebrae into, back into place uh, by charging her 35000 The other, the Chinese doctor is willing to charge 52000 there's quite a bit of difference between the two. So she chose uh, the Indian doctor. Uh. And then he told me, Pastor, I don't know whether you can help me or not. Uh. I have only 14,000 in my bank. Uh, I have only 14,000. What is required is 35,000. So I thought of it. I was thinking, I will just appeal to you. It's only a free will offering. If you are not, not uh, prompted to do so, it's okay. Uh. We don't. Because it's free will, nobody will know whether you put in the... We are going to send a second bag next week. First bag is a normal bag of collection. Second bag we will collect just for her. I, I would want to advise you to give as generously as possible because she needs 21000 See how much you can give. Our church in the past, we have helped others. A few others will help who need it. Po and also we help a lot, you know, and uh, she has been helped. She has really been helped. And uh, so you put in whatever you give uh, as unto the Lord. Uh, give it unto the Lord. Uh, we will appreciate it. We will help defray some of her costs, uh, the cost of the operation. And I was thinking I'll be talking to the church elders so that on the church side also, uh, we will bring out something. Because 21,000 uh, is not a small sum, uh, at least to us who are not rich, uh, it's not a small sum. Uh. So you think about it, uh, next week we are going to take a second collection, uh, just for her. Uh. And you know I have to slowly guide her out of my house. Uh. She's very much younger than me. And this older fella helping a younger woman, uh, you know, it should be the other way around, whereas I was the one who was helping her all the way. And every step, is a step of pain. She cannot last long without an operation. Right? Thank you very much. Please be kind to her. Think about it and give generously as unto the Lord. Uh, now we come to our speaker. I'm very glad that uh, King Ting, Sister King Ting, Katie Leong. Actually, she was saying that she knows me a long time. It's an understatement. We were in the university together, MU. Uh, we were, I'm from MU. Way back, uh, some 40, 50 years, uh, we were in MU together. And then we were teaching in the same school together. I remember her clearly uh, when we were teaching in Edison School. Uh, she was one of the fantastic teachers uh, who was... Uh, tremendous in evangelization. She has reached so many of the Anderson School, Anderson school students uh, that it was, uh, I can tell you, whenever I think back of those days, uh, my heart will leap with joy. There are so many Christians we brought, so many we brought to Christ. Uh. I remember in my class alone, I was formed Form master of Form 5 Science 1, uh, from that class, uh, there were about one third of them came to Christ, one third of them came to Christ. And then some of our classes, uh, they came to Christ until today. Uh, they are also still asking for them. She has come here because there are some of our old students uh, converted uh, 40, 50 years ago, you know, who are wanting to meet her, meet up with her. So later we are going to see how we can arrange all that. Uh. I thank God that uh, he has, she has a rich experience. She went with her husband to China, northeastern China. Northeastern China, northwestern, all right, North, northwestern China, where the husband was a professor of chemistry in one of the uh, known, well known universities in China. The husband was a professor of chemistry. Just to fill you in, uh, the husband uh, suffered from cancer. Deteriorated, became very bad. She didn't come because, probably because of that. But what she told me was, uh, lately she went for another checkup from the doctor. 
The doctor was surprised uh, that the cancer marking has dropped considerably. Uh, and he was told that uh, it's like she has no cancer. Uh. After years of having cancer, now uh, the doctor say he's like, he's, he's not saying that there's no indication. Uh, he's like he is, has no cancer. He's back to hell, his healthy self. He, uh, I also, I, I say I know both of them well. You see, uh, at that time when we, when we started life, uh, we were very poor, you know. Although I was a graduate, uh, I rented a house, uh, rented a house at the back. Uh. They came, uh, they rented from me, uh, rented a room from me, uh, remember? You rented a room from me. But do you know the husband uh, rose to become the number one man in Jolicoe Survey? Geology survey, he was the number one man in the whole country. Yeah. Tiger Lake, he was the number one man. Very godly man. Uh, these are some of the associates I'm very glad about, very proud to talk about them. Because until today, they are godly, they are intelligent, godly, and they have done great things for the Lord. She was a Bible teacher in China. You know, stirring them uh, to... Uh, desire to know the revelation. I tell you, you want to know the revelation? It's a tough book. La. And uh, that's what she did. La. She taught revelation in China. La. And then when she came, uh, I was very glad for many years because she was in China, didn't come back. She came, uh, I was very glad, but it was not a Sunday. La. That's why we couldn't let, allow her to speak on Sunday. But she spoke on Wednesday. Some of you remember, came on Wednesday meeting, she spoke. La. And today, she is able to speak to us on a Sunday on the, her favorite book, The Revelation. God has put it in her heart to speak to us about, about something in the Revelation that is tough, but it will be a revelation. And you will be blessed. Can you put your hands together to welcome her? Thank you, Pastor Hawkwart. <laughs> Very gracious, and uh, I don't deserve all the compliments, but it's all by the grace of God, like Paul says, we are what we are. And, uh, well, because time is limited, so I cannot talk so much, but just now when you all sang about the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, I can't help but think of a wonderful testimony of how salvation came to our family. The first one in our family to come to the Lord is during the Japanese occupation. My uncle, my mother's brother. Uh, my grandparents, my maternal grandparents have 12 children from Hong Kong. So during the Japanese occupation, my 10th aunt, the number 10 uh, 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 child, who's uh, my auntie, uh, came from Hong Kong to marry someone in Kuala Lumpur, right? And then she got pregnant, and then she had children, and then there were news of the Japanese coming in. And so my grandfather was very worried and asked my mother uh, to uh, uh, set sail to Port Klang, and then uh, get into KL to visit my auntie to help uh, be the confinement lady for my auntie. But after the, the, the confinement, uh, the, 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 the sirens start, start sounding very terribly and people have to run and hide because of Japanese uh, soldiers, armies approaching KL. And then my uncle, the, the husband of my auntie, uh, uh, took a tri shore. Uh, yeah, by the way, my, my, my grandpa in, in, in Hong Kong had uh, all this, uh, uh, I mean, he, he owns a ship. And that, that's uh, trading with England, you know. So uh, every time they go back and forth to Hong Kong, to UK, UK to Hong Kong, because that, uh, uh, you know very well that Hong Kong is a British colony. And so my grandpa got a lot of nice uh, British goodies, you know, like the shortbread, the, the, the Scottish shortbread, you know, and the, in those days the oval tin, you know. So my mother took a whole lot of those stuff, uh, little bag after bag, uh, and, and then set sail, you know, in, on the ship, you can put a whole lot of things. And then she, she, she got it to, to actually to feed my auntie because of confinement, you know. And then this uncle of mine helped himself to all the overtain and all the shortbread and whatnot, some biscuits. And then when the sirens, 
he, he, he booked a, 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 a tri shop and he, he took all those um, leftover uh, uh, goodies and, and filled the tri shop and then he was cycling and then he put my auntie and the baby uh, on the tri shop seat and then my mother come running after them he said sorry uh, too too narrow cannot can you fit it can you fit cannot fit you in. My mother was in tears because all the nice things I brought from Hong Kong, you took away, filling the whole tri shop, and then you cycle away with my sister, and what am I going to do? So she, and they were staying in a hut, you know, that kind of a, 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 tap, a tap hut, you know, in Songhai BC Road that time, uh, in, in KM. And so my mother uh, was stuck in that hut and, and, and was crying and said, oh dear, and now my brother-in-law has gone, he's gone to his, his, his parents and his relatives, don't know where. And my mother was new and then don't, don't, don't quite know or the whereabouts of, of KL. And so, but good thing, the Lord worked. My, my grandparents from Hong Kong was very worried about two ladies, you know, with all these uh, Japanese uh, threats and all. So what to do? So send another uh, child of his, that's my eight uncle. Now this is important, talking about the name of Jesus. Huh? Eight uncle. My eight uncle, uh, 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 that means, see, my mother is number six, uncle is number eight, and that auntie I told you who just gave birth is number ten. So six, eight, ten, uh, three siblings, right? Number six, number eight, number ten. So number eight, uncle brought his wife and uh, uh, one baby child. Put them, my, 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 my grandpa put them, he's very familiar with all the ships and all that, so got them, got, got them onto the ship and sail all the way to Prakkan again, and then get into, in, 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 and, and following the address to, to see ten auntie, there's no ten auntie, and my mother was sitting outside there crying. <laughs> See, so, so perfect timing, my, my uncle appeared. So that was comfort for my mother. And then, and then, and then my uncle asked my mother, why, 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 why are you all alone? Oh, because uh, there was some uh, announcement and siren, and then this uh, uh, brother-in-law took, 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 took sister, ten sister away, and then uh, asked me to look after myself. He said, uh, if you know Cantonese, uh, 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 that's, that, that was his policy, you know. That means during war time, no time to care for so many, uh, so you care for yourself. Each one, each man for himself. His, his policy, each man for himself. So my mother had to like, so, so, so my, 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 my uncle said, not to worry, I also brought a lot of goodies from, 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 from Papa's uh, ship and all. And he said, uh, and then at the ship, on the way to, uh, from Hong Kong to, to Port Klang, I met some uh, 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 Hokkien people, Fujian people, people who were traveling from, 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 from uh, China to Malaysia. And they say, this man has, 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 has got a, an engagement with a barber shop. He's going to be a barber. You know? And then all the Japanese soldiers will come to have, had, have their hair cut in that shop. That's, that is the information. So uh, you, you just come with me. I think I'm going to learn barbering. So during this Japanese operation, I will be a barber. And also my uncle said, he's going to be a barber. So uh, took my mother and then they went to the barber shop and thankfully the barber shop has some, some rooms at the back which, which they can rent and so, so they, 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 they settled there and uh, uh, to cut the long story short, eventually my, my father who came from Fujian uh, was in the barber shop and was cutting and then my mother was given the job of being the, the cook for all the barbers. So my mother was employed as a cook, so she, she was the main cook and then my father kind of like really love her cooking. My mother is an excellent cook, by the way, because my, my, my grandfather, after all the business uh, 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 earnings from his uh, shipping uh, 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 transportation work, managed to open a few uh, 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 restaurants. restaurants. So, so my mom, before leaving uh, uh, Hong Kong, used to uh, learn from all the chefs in the, in the Chinese restaurants in Hong Kong. So when he came to, 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 to Malaysia, to, to KL, uh, she was the the cook in the, in the barber shop and all the barbers love for cooking and my father fell in love with her and cut long story short they got married and my uncle then time was the chair <laughs> was the chairperson the officiating person for uh, chief witness uh, for, 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 for the wedding okay then after a while my mother got pregnant this is where the story comes my mother got pregnant during Japanese occupation and she just had a big craving for beef for some reason just you know like when you look at all other foods she feel like vomiting but when the smell of beef, she kind of like want to eat, you know. But then Japanese some people, oh, you can sweet potatoes and the tapioca, oh, where to find beef. So my, 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 my father start 
you know, learn a bit of Japanese and start asking these Japanese soldiers who come to for haircut, uh, uh, where, 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 where do you find pinto pinto one ngao? Where do you find fine fine beef? You know, and then they managed to to to, to point some some valley where there was a cattle rearing uh, 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 in the outskirts of 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 KL, far outskirts. I don't know. They had to cycle like for two hours before they get to that 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 the cattle ranch or something. And so my uncle accompanied my father to that cattle ranch. And who was manning the, 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 the beef stall is a Christian lady called Mrs. Tay. All right? Zheng Tai, we all call her Zheng Tai, Mrs. Tay, who came from Singapore to, don't know what, must be for relative sake, came to, came to Malaysia, Malaysia, came to KL, got stuck, and then somehow got this job to, 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 to cut beef meat to sell to uh, all these uh, people who are privileged enough to, to get into the, the, the Japanese company and then they can buy beef. So, okay. As he, she was cutting the beef, she's a good Christian lady. She has some New Testaments at the bottom of her, her, her beef store. And then, and then she was just mumbling and talking away. I, yo, in this uh, war time, uh, I, uh, you really need a divine power, a God to protect you, you know. And then you, you, you cannot call on any other God, you know. Uh, X four twelve. Uh, there's no other name under heaven except the name of Jesus, whereby you can be saved. So she was mumbling like that, and then my father wasn't paying attention. He took the, he grabbed the beef that was cut for him, paid the money, put in. You know, in those days, they, they don't have all this. Uh, but they they they, they wrap in the newspaper and then you put the big pocket and uh, you don't have baskets. Uh, put in his big 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 pocket and then my, my uncle tell me this whole story. Yeah. Uh, this big pocket. Uh, later on, my uncle became a pastor in an AOG church, Assembly of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she was the one who laid hands on me and all that. All that. Yeah. So, uh, 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 put in the big pocket and, and cycle away. And the next turn is my uncle also want to buy some beef for his wife. You know. <laughs> yeah. So he said. Uh, so while, while she was cutting, uh, she, so, so so my uncle was paying attention. He say, Oh, what the name of Jesus? Uh, only no other name. The name of Jesus. Uh. And then and then. And then she said, yeah. So my uncle asked her, oh, what, what, what name of you? She said, oh, uh, Jesus is the only true God, the only true Savior who can save us and protect us in this time. Oh, I cannot have time to tell. I've got so many experiences of how Jesus protect me and all that, you know, in all this uh, trouble. So you remember, huh? If the Japanese uh, threaten you or uh, you, uh, you are in a, a life and death situation, call on the name of Jesus. My uncle remembered that. So when she, he wrapped up the beef and put in his pocket, uh, this, this, this Mrs. Tay pulled out an, uh, a Chinese New Testament and shoved it to him. Ah, uh, here you go. Go and read. Go and read. Uh, five talk. Uh, like that. No, they were speaking Cantonese, okay? Um, because uncle is from Hong Kong, of course, Cantonese. So all the, after the uncle cycle, cycle back, and that very night, the Japanese came and searched every house in their uh, 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 barbershop area. And what, what, what the, those... Elderly people will know, know the item sok ching, you know what? You know the sok ching, huh? Yeah, that means the Japanese come and search for people. And if you are suspected of being supportive of British armies or British soldiers, you will be executed straight away. No mercy, no talk. That is the, the, the Japanese. So that night when they, when they came to the, the, the barber shop, all the men were pulled out. My father was pulled out, my uncle was pulled out, and then they say, Bring passport, bring passport. So each of them bring their passport and then they just, just shot, you know, they're very rough, you know, rough handled people, sh 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 shoot them up to the, uh, 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 and, and then march them. I think, uh, they, they, uh, I think they must have mar marched them for a half an hour to get to Pudu jail. It was, just like every time my uncle came back to visit us, uh, I, I was telling you she became a pastor and later on migrated to California, uh, 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 yeah, pastoring a church in, 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 in San Francisco. So when she came back to KL to visit us, when we, walk, when we drive past Pudu, Pudu Church, she would say, ah, that was the very place they, they, they got us in. They got a very, I almost died there. <laughs> so my uncle told us a story. Okay, so what happened was, all these men were being shoved into Pudu Jail. And when you enter the jail, uh, you, you have this uh, 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 table. Okay, imagine this table where the, 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 the Japanese uh, soldier manned the table. Yeah, sorry. Mm. And... Uh, Sitting there, and imagine him sitting there, and uh, yeah. So, so what? <laughs> okay, I'm just going to uh, get all these things out of my yeah. Right, the people were all lining up, coming in from the main entrance, and once you enter, uh, the Japanese will check your passport, 
and if they have no suspicion for you, they will tell you to go this way. There's an exit, exit door is here. But if you have some, something suspicious, they think you are uh, some spy for the British or whatever, then they put a mark on your head and then they ask you to go that way. And that is out to the field for execution. So if, as they were lining up, they could hear, pong, pong, like that, you know. My, my, my uncle said, I can hear. And I was shivering, you know. So, okay, come to my father's turn. My father has a China passport. So they say, okay, la, China passport, let you go. So my father was, was, was walking, shuffling his feet, walking like that. Then, then come my uncle. So when my, my, my uncle realized that, he said, oh, your British passport. Remember, Hong Kong is British colony. So my uncle had a British passport. Oh, you must be the sub, sub, supporter of all these British. Don't know what you, don't know what you, you, may, you might be spying for them. So straight away, they took this chalk thing, like a chalk, and marked a mark on his head. Then my uncle knew, and then they, they point to that thing, go, go, go that way, go that way. So my uncle was moving, shuffling his feet and swimming. That was where he remembered straight away what that beef seller, Mr. Tay, said, call on the name of Jesus. So my, mother, my, my uncle in Canada said, Yes, oh, I come, oh, yes, oh, I come, oh, ask Jesus to, 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 Jesus save me, you know. And uh, she said, uh, and then and he said one more thing. Uh, I, I believe you, I believe you, I, 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 I will serve you, I will give my life to you. Because you saved my life, I will give. She just mumbled these few, few, few words. And then when he opened his eyes, he was shuffling. Just a few steps only. Suddenly he said, his path was blocked. Suddenly there appeared, he said, like a, like a, like a, like a big baiyi thing, he said. He doesn't know where he, he covered. He said, when you were lying, he never seen any tall, big, fat fellow. Because my uncle is a rather small size also. So he said, he was totally blocking me, and I cannot move on. So I just shift my feet, and, and then meanwhile, the Japanese is, is busy handling the next, the next people in line. So my uncle quickly walked past and, and joined, my, joined my father and, and rub off the thing, and he was saved. So when he went back, so then, then he my, and my father ran like crazy quickly back, and, and then he said, oh yeah, yes, so Jesus has saved me, Jesus has saved me. So what the lady said is true. So we think about no other name like Jesus. So, 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 so later on when he read the Bible, he learned that he who called on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then he started taking that New Testament and started reading during the Japanese occupation. He was reading all, all from, from, from Matthew to, to, to Revelation, especially the book of, book of Romans. He kept on reading Romans that many times. And then he said, after the war, he started looking for a church. And then he, somehow he, he chanced upon Davidson Road in, in, in Kuala Lumpur. And you know Davidson Road? Uh, this side is the Methodist Church next to Methodist Bo MBS, Methodist Boys School. And the other side is a Chinese Gospel Hall. Somehow the Holy Spirit really taught him, you know, that uh, when he read about uh, in the book of Acts, all, all, the, all, all, the, all the immersion, all, all the uh, baptism, they came out of the water, you know, so then he got the idea of immersion, you know. So when he went to the Methodist church and, and he listened and then he went to see the pastor, I want to, I want to get baptized before he, he, he was due to go back to Hong Kong. Huh? Um, so they go and take some uh, bowl of water. To, he said, no, 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 no. I want to get inside the water to come out of the water. <laughs> so so, so this, this pastor said, oh, if you want baptism, immersion, you go opposite Fuk Yam Tong, Gospel Hall. That's how we landed in Gospel Hall. Right, my uncle went over there, and then that time was a pastor Ma, Ma Thompson, uh, yeah, preacher Ma. Uh, he, he, he explained the gospel fully to my, to my uncle. My uncle, yeah, 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 I read about it, yeah, so good. So then, after that, my uncle uh, left, uh, left uh, um, Malaysia to go back to Hong Kong, and then uh, left a Bible for Pastor Ma to give to my mother. But that time, my mother was so busy worshipping idols and having us children and all. So another long story, so I won't tell that, but how my mother came to the Lord. But this is to, to, to trigger me when we talk about the name of the Lord. And then when my sister Mei Ching talked about the, the, the importance of the word of God, it's, it's, it's true. You know, we all are very familiar with John 3.16, God so loved the world. But then there is another 3.16 that you, we must remember about the word of God. It is Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Yeah, yeah. So the, I, I always like the passage of, of Colossians 3. Uh, it is a triplet 
15, 16, 17. 16 is the central verse, word of Christ. But verse 15, Colossians 3, 15 is about the peace of Christ, right? Uh, to, 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 to govern, to rule over our lives, our hearts. Right? And then the, after 16 is 317, it is the name of Christ. Again, we talk about the name. Huh? Whatever we do, now we worship, we sing, whatever we do, we go back to work. Uh, whatever we do, we do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So remember the triplet of Colossians 3. 15, 16, 17. 16 is the central verse. Huh? The peace of Christ to rule you the word of Christ to dwell in you richly and the name of the Lord for us to do everything in that name and you will, feel, you will find power, you will find fruitfulness, you will find uh, uh, success, right? So this, uh, just now we said about the name of the Lord, so many things so stronger and, and, and greater can heal can, 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 and, 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 and uh, uh, save us. So the, 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 the name of Christ indeed brings about redemption, restoration and transformation to our lives okay yeah so this is our lord okay so today our uh, 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 okay <laughs> wonderful thank you for being so 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 prompt remind me of china when we were in china i mean i'm i'm totally uh, 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 technically uh, technologically illiterate so when i when i when i went to the city and then this young man use their computer and do things so every time i mention a verse just like it will come out. So they are so cooperative. So I'm very thankful for uh, uh, technologically savvy people who use the technology to serve the Lord. It's what we call sanctified technology. Okay, right. So now today we are going to do a uh, 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 Revelation 14. Yeah, uh, uh, Pastor Hawkwood is very right in uh, in saying that uh, when we were in China, there was so much hunger for God's word, and every time you come to a a, 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 a new church, you know, house churches. Uh, uh, to date, since we have been in, engaged in China work for the last 20 over years, uh, we have been uh, led from, 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 from city to city, village to village, and uh, uh, to date we have covered something like 10 provinces, uh, uh, ministering to, to, to many, many house church leaders. And every time I ask the house church leader, what would you like to do? Because my, our time there is short, we cannot stay so long. Because after my husband finished all his uh, uh, teaching uh, assignments, uh, they begin to realize that we are no, no good for them because these people are up to no good because we keep on conducting by secretly Bible studies and all that and we are being followed by the police and all. And so they know, uh, uh, they don't want us to suit, suit our visas after about six years were not renewed. Huh? Five over years, almost six. Huh? So we have to, from then on, just go in, in and out as, as tourists. Uh, uh, but because of my Singapore passport, I, we can stay there for two, two weeks. Uh, without, without visa, yeah. Because we, when you apply for visa, you have to fill in so many things and then they will ask all kinds of questions and then they will know how to track you. So we, 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 we thought we better just use the um, uh, uh, two-week uh, visa-free to, to, tourists. Uh, and we always make full use of the, of the two weeks. From, uh, uh, every time we go to one, some place, um, I will ask the leaders, what would, what would you like to learn? You know, because I praise God for granting me granting me the opportunity to go, go, to, go to Singapore and uh, be trained in the Singapore Bible College. And after I finished my master's, the, 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 the dean was so nice to, to ask me to stay on to teach Greek. So I taught uh, a Greek uh, exegesis for, 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 for nine years in Singapore Bible College before the Lord uh, opened the door for us to go to China. And from then on, uh, it was uh, 24 years ago yeah, yeah, that, that, that we, we, we landed in China and, 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 and started teaching and then I was given a, a task to teach English to the second year university students and then I was able to uh, reach out to them and, uh, and praise God one by one of them came to know the Lord and, and we have to find a place to baptize them because we're given a very tiny flat with no, no, no bathtub, nothing, just a, 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 a tiny tap where we just uh, have to use a pail to, 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 to fill up water and then a good thing I brought my kettle along and then uh, uh, two kettles of, of warm hot water because winter is very cold in northwest China next to Gobi Desert, you know, and then with all the windstorms and all very cold. Yeah, but by, by God's grace we survived, right? So, uh, after we meet these church leaders, in fact it was through one of my students, one of my English students, I asked uh, 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 whether, I mean I didn't, I didn't ask. We were just praying for how can we, I mean, you, you have no buildings, you have no 
no signs, they don't know where to find a church in the northwest, you know. So uh, after one, one English lesson, one of my students, we, we call him Henry, and he came to me and said, uh, a teacher, can I ask you a question? I say, I thought she, said, she doesn't understand my English lessons. I say, is there something wrong with my English teaching? He said, no, 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 no. We are very thankful for the way you teach and da 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 da. And then after that, I said, uh, then what? Then he, he started looking right, left, front, back. The whole class is empty, all, make sure all the classes have gone. Then he said, I just want to ask, are you Christian? I say, why do you ask that? He said, because your teaching is different from what the other teachers. More like Christian teaching. I, 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 didn't, I didn't teach religion in the class. I was just uh, trying to, 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 to show some Christian compassion. I see them tired, sleepy, pale looking, and I, I will say words of, try to say words of comfort and then use all these words like consolation, condolence, all sympathy, compassion, and all the words on the board to teach them English, you see? <laughs> so, uh, and, then, and one, of, one of the girls, one of the girls uh, who came from a very, very poor village in the Northwest, uh, 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 I, I, when I passed the school canteen after class, I saw her eating just plain noodles with nothing on it. So I asked her, I said, why you eat like that? She says, uh, I come from poor village, I don't have much pocket money, this is what I can afford. Because if I add the beef, you know, Lancho La Mian is very famous, you know, I was in the city of Lancho. He said, the, uh, the, the, the beef noodle is famous in that area, you know. But I said, why don't you... He said, oh, uh, that I will have to pay another how many, uh, 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 two dollars two renminbi, you know, cannot, cannot. So, then I invite her to my flat. I will give you dinner. So I put a lot of beef on her, on her noodle and a lot of vegetables on the noodle. I said, you need nourishment. No wonder you look so tired. You look so sleepy in class. Uh, I think half, halfway I'm talking, you're dozing off already. <laughs> He says, thank you, teacher, thank you, teacher. So she started inviting a few of her other classmates, and so we started a Bible class. Not, not so much a Bible class, we actually began with an a, a English conversational class. And then in the course of conversation, I asked them, do you know, uh, do, 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 you, do you believe in God? There's a God up there, so the concept of God, the concept of, of, of uh, 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 salvation and all that come up. So we, we start learning all those new words. And eventually, I, 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 I put my New Testament on the table. I cannot just give them. Then, it, then they will accuse me of like forcing religion on them. So I say, uh, you help yourself. You like, you take. Don't like, don't take. I say. <laughs> but if you take, don't, 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 don't blame me. Yeah? Yeah. Just say you take it uh, from someone. That's all. Uh. <laughs> so all of them took. I think by then there were about like nine or ten students who come every Tuesday to my flat uh, to have dinner and then we, we, we do conversational and then we go into topics like a spiritual health, you know, a spiritual needs and all, all that stuff. So, 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 so when they took the book, I, I introduced them to the um, first John because the, the, the sentences there are very easy, you know, for, for them to, to read, you know, like God is love, God is light, you know, and then they, they want to ask, what, what, what does that mean, you know? So I will use Mandarin to help them understand better because they are more conversant in, in Mandarin. And, and then, by God's grace, one by one, come to know the Lord. Okay, so later on, when the, uh, uh, this, this, this Henry uh, learned that I was, I, I, I was, I told him I'm a Christian, and I asked him, are you? He said, yes. And then I said, what church you go to? He said, he goes to a house. I said, good. That's what I want to attend. I said, I say, can you bring me to your, to your church leader? He said, not now, because uh, uh, the surveillance is very heavy. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are under threat, so we are, we are stopping. These, these, these poor believers, every now and then, they have to stop, stop their meeting. I mean, we have our COVID and have stopped, meetings stop, and then start, stop, start, stop, that kind of uh, situation. So only when the coast is clear, uh, they can re uh, resume their meetings. Then when they hear that there's something, the, 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 the surveillance going on in that block of their flat, then they will stop their meetings. So once, once they ask, um, okay, so after that, I was, uh, uh, when the coast was clear, I was able to join them. And there were only 10 people in that meeting, just 10 of them, and then they, they, they cannot have big numbers because uh, that will uh, um, uh, attract the attention of the police. And then we have to sing very softly. They have to close all the windows because neighbors will complain, you know, that there's some uh, religious people next door and all that. So when I met with them on that Sunday, uh, uh, I was surprised that the, 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 the simple worship was just one little stand up, and read a verse from Psalms or, or some other part of scripture. And then one, another leader will set up and pray. 
and then the, another leader will, 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 will ask for some hymns to be sung. They have a so nice song book. So they all just and they, they sing and then and then there was no keyboard, there was no musical instrument, and so they, it's all a cappella. So later on, I bought a keyboard for them and I played for them, and then they were so happy that there's some uh, musical accompaniment, and then we, we start singing a lot. And I taught them a few more new songs uh, from their from their own hymn, hymn book. So it was so lovely, lovely fellowship. And then I asked them because that day when they asked me to share. So after all the the, the meeting, you know, someone prays, someone read scriptures, uh, 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 someone choose a hymn. Then I asked them, uh, who's the speaker? We we don't have speakers. Every Sunday is just like that. Everybody shares something. Because there's no one uh, to them qualified to teach. So, so, so I said, uh, so they asked me to teach. I said, okay, okay. So that day, my own quiet time was the book of Jude. So I went through the whole book of Jude with them. I tried to do it as fast as possible. But then they, 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 they sat there and said, uh, 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 don't hurry. You, you, you can take another hour, you know. We want to learn more. So I start elaborating on the Sodom and Gomorrah and all, all the, uh, you know, Michael, Angel and, and so forth, all, all, all the uh, parts of the book of Jude that needed explanation. So I went, went, went on for, for another hour. Then they say, thank you, thank you. And you can go on some more. So went for another. So all together, three hours that Sunday morning. And then after that day, I asked them, uh, they, they had lunch, they cooked lunch, and, we, and I asked them what, what else did they want to do. Then straight away, the, the, the main leader there said, we can understand most of what we read in the Bible from Genesis all the way down to Jude, like you explained today. Uh, thank you for the further elaboration. But what I, we need most is the last book, Revelation. That was where I started teaching the book of Revelation for them. And I was so glad that the Lord gave me the opportunity to learn the whole book through the original language when I was uh, um, studying uh, training in at Bible College as well as uh, having to teach Greek. And I had to choose a lot of passages from revelation to unpack some of the nuances and the implications and the elaborations of uh, 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 yeah of some translation that are, are limited because our english language while good is rather limited the the greek language is a very rich language and the, sometimes one word one tense and then one voice and all can have open up into a lot of uh, implications and nuances and elaborations for uh, richer clearer, deeper understanding. All right, so today, and so, so that was how uh, over the 20 years, uh, having, having covered um, something like uh, the 10 provinces and many villages, and we, we do all our leadership training, getting all the pastors together, we, we pay their train fare, bus fare, we, 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 we keep them, provide food for them, and then uh, they, they, they sit there for, for, from, from Monday to Friday, and then after they rush back to do, do their ministry in church, quietly every day from 8 to 12, then lunch break, then one hour rest, then 2 to 6. So every day, 8 hours. In those 5 days, we finish the whole book of Revelation. All 22 chapters, verse by verse exposition. And, and, and they really appreciate because now, as you say, we can now share this with uh, the rest of our congregation. So now, after that, when COVID hit, we cannot go in anymore. So we, thank, we are thankful that the leaders are still holding strong and they some, sometimes when they can get into the WhatsApp, they will text me and, uh, and tell me what's going on. They say they are going through difficulty, a lot of uh, uh, restrictions, but thank God they, they, they still are able to meet in smaller groups here and there and, and, and sharing the word. So we, we, we may have difficulty, but they are even ha uh, having harder times, yeah? So we want to pray for them. Okay, so today, um, Revelation 14, and so that's how, uh, after teaching, I think something like 30 times, yeah, in the both... Uh, uh, well, in Hong Kong, have to do Cantonese. In, in China, have to do Mandarin. And then back in Singapore, uh, where various churches request, I have to do it in English. So, um, the Lord has put thoughts and understanding for me to, 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 to get a clearer and clearer view of what's happening. And I believe that this chapter 14 is a very crucial chapter for our times. A lot of, I, when I went to the churches, I find that most churches, they only teach Revelation from chapter 1 to 3. Some go further to chapter 5, like my church only went up to chapter 5. Beyond that, they stop. They don't go further. I say, what a pity. God has given us a wonderful final last day, what we call the eschatological message. 
eschatological, that means end times, uh, from, the, from the Greek word eschatos, which means last things. Uh, uh, God has given us this wonderful book to let us know how he will bring the whole of human history that began in Genesis to a fitting, final, righteous, blessed conclusion. And if we don't read through it, we have missed so much. And in this book, there are seven blessings. Do a treasure hunt and hunt through them. When the Lord gave us the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, we have eight blessings, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, and then blessed are the merciful, and they that mourn, and the pure in heart, and all that, right? uh, the hunger after righteousness, and all that. So we have eight Beatitudes in Matthew 5. What we say in Chinese, Pak Fok. We say in Chinese, Pak Fok. But um, in the book of Revelation, you will find seven Beatitudes. It begins with chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed are those who read. So, okay, could, uh, before we read chapter 14, just have a quick look at chapter 1, where the first beatitude is, is uh, given to us. Okay? Verse 3 says, Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy and, uh, 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 and, um, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, let me, let me just take away my glasses. Huh? Yeah. And, and, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. So that is the first beatitude. And in the Greek, there's only one, one time the word blessed, makarios, that is a, a written one. It means blessed are, is, a, is the one who, 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 who read the book of, of, the, of this prophecy and those who hear it and take to heart. But the... Uh, 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 Okay, blessed is he who reads and those who hear. Yeah. So King James Version has it from, straight from the Greek. Okay? So blessed is the one who reads and those who hear. So just one word, blessed. Okay? Uh, the words of this prophecy. Notice then for the book of Revelation is a prophecy. And it is the final prophecy. God's last word. How do we know? Because by the time you come to the last chapter, he says for those who add something to it or take away anything from it, there will be trouble. Okay? Because if you add something, God will add all the troubles that are spoken, all the punishment, judgment, and all the suffering that, 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 God, that I mentioned. And after so when we go down the chapter, uh, we, will, we will see one horrible end time suffering that, that, that is going to take place. So we don't simply add to God's word. You have to be very careful. And we don't subtract anything from it. That's why when I teach Revelation, I want to make questions. We go through every verse so that uh, we don't uh, uh, shortchange God's message because everything is like a jigsaw puzzle. Come, uh, all the pieces are important. They come together and give you the full picture. And all you need to do actually is because the Holy Spirit is our teacher and guide, isn't it? Yeah? So uh, when I was studying this book, I was on my knees. I pray. I said, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are my teacher. You guide me. So every, every, every note I take down is actually the downloading from God by the Holy Spirit, helping us to understand what God's way. So that is the first beatitude. And today in chapter 14, you see the second beatitude. All right? And the rest of it, I will leave it to you to go back prayerfully, asking the direction and guidance of the Holy Spirit to teach you, to uh, illuminate you, and you will understand, and you will be able to get into the end of the book. But of course, sometimes certain things are much harder to understand and we need the help of godly men who have plowed through the book with a lot of uh, research work. You know, like the Berean Christians, they've done research and examined carefully and they do a lot of cross-references because normally the uh, principle, what we call the uh, hermen, uh, yeah, yeah, hermeneutical principle, that means how you interpret scripture, uh, is one, one very important principle is let scripture explain scripture. We don't impose our own ideas and thoughts onto the Word of God. When you read something, and they say, oh, this Mount Zion, there is some mention there. So the same topic, of the, of the same situation, then you connect. So today I'm going to just attempt to help you connect a little bit and how Scripture explains Scripture. And that's the way then you get the full picture and you will know the wonderful prophecy of what's going to happen at the end of the world. And what we are seeing around us. They are all fulfillment of the earlier prophecy. Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, 
has given us the signs of the end times. The disciples were asking Jesus Christ for what sign? Because Jesus Christ was talking about the destruction of Jerusalem, and so straight away the disciples thought that must be the end of the world. I mean, the, for them, Jerusalem is such a wonderful place, and God won't destroy it until the end, right? So they asked Jesus Christ, what are the signs of the end? And Jesus Christ gave them the answer. So, uh, I mean, when I was in China, I will help them connect Matthew 24 with chapter 6, where the seals are open, and it's exactly the way Jesus Christ uh, uh, um, prophesied about the end times. So we have the uh, prophecy of Jesus Christ, what we call the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24, and then, the, uh, then, then things are kind of like, 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 like expanded and elaborated and opened up, opened up. That's why it's called the book of Revelation. Things are more, more fully revealed, more, more elaborately revealed for us to understand better. But you can fit in with what Jesus says and what other scriptures say as God inspired people like Paul, Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, and uh, 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 Apostle Jude and all. The, the, uh, the, there are some references to the end time, so that's how we, we, we connect. But because of uh, limited time, I, would, I wouldn't uh, go, go to so much except for what we do today in chapter 14. Okay, so then I look, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, uh, with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. Okay, so this is the vision of, 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 of uh, Apostle Paul. He looked and he saw. Okay, so that's this vision. Uh, if you look through the book of Revelation, there are four main visions, okay? The first vision is in chapter 1, where Jesus Christ appears as the glorious risen Lord with all the power, authority given him, and how he will judge the church first. Judgment begin, begins with the house of God, First Peter says, right? So, God will first judge the church. So, chapter 2 and 3 will show you how God judged the church. That means what verdict is given, what conclusion is drawn, and what must be done. And out of the seven churches, five have to repent. So in other words, the church is in very, very bad shape in the end times. That is the message. Church is in very, very bad shape in the end times. Only two were pleasing to the Lord. So my humble prayer is that, Lord, may we be found among the faithful church. Church of Smyrna in chapter 2 and Church of Philadelphia in chapter 3. Only two have no criticism, no complaint from our Lord Jesus Christ. But the other five, they are in the dire straits. You know? Church of Ephesus, you have lost your first love. Church of Pergamum, you have some character called like Balaam, love of money and all the rest of it, okay? You know the story. Uh, church of Thyatira, or oh, a character called Jezebel, you know, the, all the sexual immorality and the, the idolatrous practices and all, no? So that is... Uh, the, and then uh, chapter 3, Church of Sardis, or oh, sleepy Christians, you know, they are not awake, they are not alive, they are not aware of all the happenings around. So we have to be awake and uh, Jesus Christ says, watch and pray. Watch means have your eyes opened look around and see what's happening and pray, okay? Yeah, so what's happening is actually fulfillment of prophecy, okay? You look at Jerusalem, what's happening now? Middle East, what's happening now? Uh, the, 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 the Jews, the Messianic Jews, the, 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 the Orthodox Jews, the ultra-Orthodox Jews, what are they saying? Oh, it is all what Jesus Christ has said. And then the final fulfillment will be Romans 9, 10, 11, especially chapter 11, eventually... God will bring back his people, those who repent, will come back to him. And then uh, you, you connect with uh, Revelation 11. That is what I call the Jewish chapter. You know, you have the temple being rebuilt. You have uh, uh, the two witnesses in Jerusalem and so forth. Huh? So that will be the final scene. You know, very, very hard to explain because there are all kinds of scholars. Huh? Some impose their own ideas. Some refer to some ancient texts and all. So, I mean, I, I won't, because when I study... A revelation under my professor came from uh, uh, the states. Huh? He asked us to be very careful to just uh, not to eisegesis them and then read into the text, huh? but to exegesis them and bring out the, the, the word of God faithfully uh, from what the text tells us. Okay, so now back to chapter 14, a lamb standing. So of course we know from chapter 5 the lamb is Jesus Christ, okay, of Revelation and on Mount Zion. So once you see this Mount Zion, can we have the first cross reference, Hebrews chapter 12? Yeah, I can thank you. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12. So when you see Mount Zion, you will, you will, you will see uh, that the connecting verse is Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, uh, can, you, can you find Hebrews chapter 12? Yeah, I think it's like verse 24, 25, some, yeah, somewhere there, where it says, uh, during Moses' time, and we talk about Moses and the, and the, and the burning bush, but this time is Moses on, a, on Mount Sinai, okay? And, and that was the, uh, 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 yeah, uh, 20, further down, uh, what, what, what was the text I gave you? Mm, uh, 
for the Hebrews 12, further down, further down, 25, 26, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, is, is, how come? Ah, verse 32, correct. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So this Mount Zion is actually the city of the living God, according to Hebrews. So this is how scripture explains scripture, okay? Heavenly Jerusalem. And by the time you come to the last two chapters of Revelation, chapter 21, that is the new Jerusalem. So that is the heavenly Jerusalem. Uh, so an innumerable company. So Hebrews 12 is giving you more details about this Revelation 14 verse 1, okay? So this is what will happen. Okay, let's, let's, let's read on from Hebrews 12, verse 23. There's going to be an innumerable company of angels. Please note, nah? so I'm going to call this the, 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 the gra- g- glorious gathering. Glorious gathering of saints and angels, okay? Yeah, so can we go on to verse 23? To the general assembly. So we are the general assembly. All the saved people of God. Church of the firstborn. Uh, the, 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 the firstborn is Jesus Christ. He's the firstborn. Huh? Uh, who are registered in heaven to God, the judge of all. So God is going to be there. Jesus Christ is going to be there. To the spirits of just men made perfect. Right? So all these people. So Hebrews 12 give you all the elaboration of the big crowd that form what we call the 144,000 in the Revelation 14, okay? So Jesus then is the mediator of the new covenant, so he's the one, the key uh, person who, who, who grants us the salvation the, to the blood of sprinkling. There was Jesus Christ's blood, uh, apart from what we learned from the, uh, what you call the, the Holy Communion we had just now, uh, how our sins are forgiven, our sins, we are cleansed. Huh? So it is called the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. So Abel is uh, the, the, the first righteous man who died because of righteousness. Huh? The, 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 bubble, the, 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 the brother murdered him. Okay, verse 25. See that you do not refuse him who speak. That means this is the teaching from this New Jerusalem, Mount Zion uh, uh, experience, right? We do not refuse what God is saying to us, that, that prophetic word about the end times, New Jerusalem, okay? Prophetic word about the end times, about the end of the world, we, we pay attention. That means you must pay attention to every word that you read in the book of Revelation and other prophecies about end times. That's what we call the eschatological passages. For if you do not escape who refuse, I mean those people during Moses' time, when they refuse to listen to what Moses say, uh, 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 as God commanded him, uh, uh, him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. God is speaking from heaven. The whole book of Revelation is the word from heaven because John saw four visions. Like I tell you, chapter 1 is the first vision, then chapter 4 is the second vision, then chapter 17 is the third vision, all the way on. So chapter 4 is the longest from chapter 4 to chapter 16. So it's the major content of the book of Revelation. Okay? Then chapter 17, 18... 1920 is the third vision. Then 21, 22 is the last vision. Okay, so, so, so all these visions you put together will give you a, a good idea of what God has purposed and planned for us for our eternal blessing. God loves us. He has wonderful things planned for us. That's why Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 said, Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of uh, uh, minds of, of humans what God has prepared for those who love him. So the key thing is God first loved us, we must love him. And our first love for him is to respond to his invitation to come to him to receive salvation from Jesus Christ, right? And then we will be able to claim all these promises now. During that Moses' time, verse 26 now, whose voice then shook the earth. You know how Sinai was shaking and all the Israelites were so frightened and so scared. They asked Moses, oh, oh, you, don't, 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 you don't want to listen, it's very frightening. Because it's like thunderous voice. God is speaking, you know, through the, through, through, through the thunder and storm around Mount Sinai. Huh? Mm. At that time, it was very frightening. You know? can go back to Genesis and, and, and read the story. Yeah? But now he has promised, so we come back to the end time, huh? saying, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. So this is the promise of God, and this is the prophecy, and this was uh, prophesied by prophet Haggai. Haggai, okay? You go back and read the book. Haggai chapter 2, huh? you will find this verse. God says, once more, I will not only shake the earth, but I will shake the heaven. And when you read the book of Revelation, you see actually how God layer by layer, level by level, shakes the earth. Chapter 6, the white horse, what I call ideological shake-up. Antichrist, false Christ, all the false prophets, false teachers, that is, 
It means they, they, they come in the, in the form of like, I am Jesus Christ, I am the truth, I, I, I give you the right teaching, you know. So that is the white horse. That means the, 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 the true rider of the white horse is chapter 19 with Christ himself, right? But in chapter 6, you have a false Christ who also uh, assumed the white color. You know, that means false Christ, I am Christ, you know? but he is not, right? Yeah? That's why when I was in China, one of the big cults there is what we call the, the, the cult of the Eastern Lightning. And, and all the church leaders are so worried because a lot of the church members have been siphoned off by these uh, uh, followers of Eastern Lightning. And so one of my, my, I told you, my, my, my student, Henry, who also followed them, we missed him and quickly bring him back and I have to explain to him. And he showed, I asked him to show me the book they, they gave him. And, 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 the, and the writer claimed she's a lady who started this uh, cult, Eastern Lightning, and she called herself, I am the Christ. And all the people fall down to worship her and empty all their pockets to give her. So you know how she explained? She said, oh, God is very fair. He loves both men and women, male and female. So the first Christ is a male. So I am the female and I am the, 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 the letter Christ and all the kind of cult. So oh, yo, we have to really fight all these cults and to like, correct them and go back to Revelation and show them he is the Lamb of God who was slain and that he is the one, uh, the, 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 this, the, 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 the first and the last, both the first and the last. So first Christ is also last Christ. I say, yeah? The first and the last, the beginning and the end. Yeah. So Hebrew writers say, once more indicates the removal of things that are being shaken. So layer by layer things are being shaken and God will remove them. That's how the world will end. So gradual, progressive, okay? So ideological shake-up, red horse is what we call political shake-up, all the wars against wars, what Jesus said in, in Matthew 24, nation against nation and so forth. And then uh, the black horse is now economic shake-up. Prices go up. Prices will be rising like crazy until your daily earning. That's what the third horse talk about, okay? The black horse, huh? One day's earning, uh, the, the, the denarii uh, denari that is mentioned at that time in those times, is actually one day's wage, can only buy enough for your simple food meal for the day. Don't talk about other accessories that you need to buy, uh, only the basic necessity. All right, so that is economic shakeup, is, and it's happening already. And then uh, the, 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 the Asian horse, uh, which is the, the, the grey horse, they call it, but actually the Greek word is a chloros from which we get our word chlorophyll, is actually a, a green horse. And the idea is very much like our Chinese, uh, the Greek idea of this chloros, this green, uh, is like our Chinese min tang tang, you know. Min tang means, means, means no blood, like, 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 like go to die, die. And when the person just died, the, 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 the face become min tang tang, you know, and the chloros color. And that's how the Greek understand the word chloros, okay. So, so, so that's why the, the, the interpreters uh, 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 use the word, uh, 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 some, some, some explain ashen, some translate grey horse, uh, and some, but they did not explain, uh, they did not translate green, because the, the English idea of green and the Chinese idea of green is more like fresh spring and all that, you know, but the, the, the Greek horror is more like uh, 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 the Chinese Min Cheng Cheng idea, okay? Yeah, so the, uh, all, all shaken, and then, uh, and, and so that the things which cannot be shaken remain. So by the time the fifth seal opened in chapter 6, huh, it is the church being shaken. Eventually, God will shake up the church. Now, how, how does God shake up, church? shake up the church? Allow a final testing of the faith. And that brings us to chapter 13, where Antichrist will appear, and he will target the saints, he will persecute the saints. Even Daniel, prophet Daniel mentions that. The saints will be targeted, will be persecuted, and that will be the message that Smyrna get, prophetic message for Smyrna. You will suffer persecution. Now, the word persecution, the same word, the ellipsis, the same word translated tribulation. So if you want to go by actual translation, the chapter 2, verse 10, message to the church of Smyrna is, you will suffer tribulation for 10 days. That's the accurate translation. So when I was teaching my students Greek in Singapore Bible College, I will mark their translation to see how accurate they, they have checked the, the, the dictionary or the lexicon with better, better uh, explanation, right? So there will be this final testing of the faith. Not to punish you, not God. So that's why it's wrong to say the word the ellipsis, which is translated distribution, is God's judgment. Because God has a different word for judgment. You'll come to chapter 14, and, and it's the word for orge, the wrath of God. The cups of wrath, you know. So when the seven, uh, uh, um, the, the seven bowls are poured out, so that's the bowls of wrath, and it is clearly 
it's stated there, written in Greek, the, 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 it's a different word. So don't get the, the words mixed up. That's why when we, when we teach Greek, we want to differentiate between the different words used. Huh? So, so down now, 20 sins, we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. So the church will be shaken, and then after that, God will just shake the heavens, right? There will be a big earthquake at the opening of the sixth seal, and then or the, the sun will, 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 will turn dark, the moon will turn, become red. We already see early signs of the red moon and all, all the uh, 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 solar eclipses, the, 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 the darkening of the sun and all that. And eventually, the, sky, the, 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 the stars will fall. And by the time we come to chapter 8, the trumpets will blow, and the trumpets signify final warning. Final warning. Right? So all the stars will come tumbling down and then again, layer by layer, I mean, uh, uh, area by area more like, uh, because the whole outer space universe is so large, so uh, uh, it is not so much in area, but it, uh, not so much in, in, in levels and layers, but more like area by area, uh, you know, the, the, the stellar area, the, the galactic area, galaxies and all that, all shaken up, all in chapter 8. So God has his plan all laid out for us. And by the time we come to chapter 9, six trumpets have blown. And what did Paul say in 1 Corinthians 15? Okay, let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15, huh? where Paul says, at the last trumpet. So people are asking, when does resurrection and rapture take place? We don't have our own ideas. Go to scripture, always go to the word of God, okay? 1 Corinthians 15. Can we have that verse? Verse 50. Yeah? 1 Corinthians chapter 50. Great, great. The verse 50, 51, 50 and 51, I think. Yeah. Uh, Paul, Paul says, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So in our present bodies, we cannot go into heaven. That's why we have to pass through the physical death. All right? Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit. So in this body, you can't get into heaven. Just cannot tapole masok, right? Only when God gives a new body. And in, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 21, yes, we are going to get the glorious body. Same as the resurrected body of Christ. You remember a Jesus Christ's resurrection? You can close your door shut. He can come in. You remember how he appeared to the disciples? That is the resurrection body. And we are going to be given that body. That is the promise of Philippians Chapter 3, verse 21. Okay? So I won't read that because time is running. So I just say, I will, I will refer to what Paul says, Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 51. I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, we shall be all changed. Because the body has to change. But not everybody will die. That means there will be some people still alive. And that will, that will constitute the raptured people. Raptured people. When you're still alive, you get raptured. But if you have, you're sleeping, you have, you have died, you're sleeping in the Lord, you will be, you, 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 you'll be awakened, and that's the resurrection. That's why I call it R&R, &R, resurrection and rapture. Okay? Right. Now this, brethren, I say, uh, 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 after 50, verse 52, please. 52, thank you. Yeah. I, uh, in a moment, now notice, very fast. God would, when God does things, huh, he, he, he doesn't drag. When, when this time up, time arrives, in a moment, in the twinkling of eye, you, you just bring your eye, hey, if you're still alive, Hey, but you'll be undergoing a lot of testing, you know, you read chapter 13, huh? you have to stand firm, don't take the mark of the beast and all that. Now, we don't know how, how, how much God let us uh, go through that, but I don't think it will be much because the chapter 2 verse 10, the numbers in Revelation are symbolic. You will suffer tribulation for 10 days, very short period. So some people take a literal, which I, 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 I don't mind, because when I teach Revelation, I say, some people take a literal, it can be that way. Some people take it symbolic, and simply means very short time. Okay? Yeah. So in the moment, in the of eye, at the last trumpet, a lot of people ignore this. And then they go into all their own ideas of when rapture, rapture takes place. But here it's so clearly said in the moment and twinkle of eye at the last trumpet, trumpet will sound, that means this last trumpet will sound, the dead will rise. So when does resurrection take place? At the last trumpet. When that trumpet sound. And where do you find it in Revelation? So this is all end time thing. is resurrection. Uh, raise the dead race incorruptible which will all be changed. So it's clearly the resurrection end times event. And that takes place in chapter 11 where it says the last trumpet blow. And the angels are shouting, the kingdoms of this earth have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. Remember the Messiah that uh, yeah, Handel's Messiah has that song. So, that is the 
thing we know, okay? Now, so that's why if you read through the whole book of Revelation, you can see a, a, a very rough outline. Chapter 1 introduces the key figure, Lord Jesus Christ. He appears, all right, as the, as the risen Lord, the, 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 the final judge. Then from chapter 2 to chapter 9, you have eight chapters. Two to nine, eight chapters. So just think of, after chapter 1 introduction, because the key verse is there, Behold, I come, verse 7, huh? in the clouds and all. So chapter 1 is introductory, then chapter 2 to 9, 8 chapters, then middle, 5 chapters, and final 8 chapters. So I call it 1, then 8, 5, 8. And the 5 chapters in the center is very crucial for us who are still living in the end times. Chapter 10 to 14, that's why I choose the, 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 the end of this middle block. Okay? 10 to 14. And I will be sharing chapter 10 in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah? Yeah. So 10 to 14, in a moment, uh, uh, that you, 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 you will find that it is the, uh, the, the events surrounding the resurrection and rapture. It is the last trumpet events. Okay? So 2 to 9 is what we call the pre-R&R, &R, pre-resurrection rapture events. 10 to 14 is all the events around the the period of resurrection and rapture. And then after that, uh, chapter 15, all the way to the end is after resurrection and rapture events. Then that, you, that will help, help you understand, okay? All right, so now we come back to our chapter 14 of Revelation, uh, Revelation and I, I have to run. Huh? In uh, uh, chapter 14, say, uh, okay, before verse 12, now let's look at the, the people who will make it to heaven, all right? On Mount Zion, the, 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 just now we read about Mount Zion, how, how there will be a grand gathering there. So, uh, Revelation chapter 14 describes this grand gathering in heaven. Uh, can we have verse uh, uh, 2, verse 2? Yeah, just now it was verse 1. Okay, and I heard a voice from, voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters. Now, whoa, all, the, all the throats are rolling, all the sounds are singing. Just, uh, just now we say the, the, the singer's roar. Uh, just now we were, we were worshipping, uh, there's a phrase, the singer's roar. So this is the heavenly singer's roaring, okay? Uh, like voice of many words, like the voice of loud thunder. Uh, and then also heard the sound of harpies. So these are the re redeemed group. So they, they are portrayed as 144,000. And notice they have the mark of the Lord, uh, the, the name of the Father, the name of Christ on their forehead. Contrary to the mark of the beast, people who don't believe Jesus, people who don't read the word of God and understand they were, they were like, 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 like gong gong like that, go and take the, the mark of the beast. So they have to be very careful and understand. Huh? Okay, so these, these are the redeemed people. They, 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 they're going to play the harp. How do we know? Next verse. The next verse is very important. They sang a new song before the throne. Where are they singing? In heaven. Before whom are they singing? Before the four living creatures, the elders and no one can let the song except the 144,000 who are redeemed from the earth. So the 144,000 are the redeemed community. All the people who are saved by Jesus Christ are saved. So this chapter is about the saved and then the unsaved later on. Huh? Now, they sang a new song. But who are the audience? The four living creatures? Before the throne. Who's on the throne? Father God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, the Holy Spirit is depicted in chapter 4 and 5 as the seven lambs burning in front of the throne, okay? So that means before the, the triune God, huh? So the, 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 the means God is there, the triune God is there, and then also the four living creatures are the highest level of angels, okay? The most powerful angels, if you like, because they, they personally serve Jesus Christ. If you read chapter 6, they are the one who, uh, when Jesus opened the seal, they are the one who starts shouting and, 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 and call the, the shots, okay? Then, uh, the, the elders, the, 30, the 24 elders. So all these are angels before the throne and the following creatures and the elders. So they are the ones listening to the singing. So the elders are not singing. That's why when, when people try to explain to say the elders are the leaders of the church, you know, uh, the 12 of them being the patriarchs of the New T Old Testament and the other 12, the 12 apostles of the New Testament, it is a wrong explanation because here clearly stated that they don't sing. No one could learn that song except the 144,000. So the, those on the throat, Christ, uh, the, the triune God, and then the four living creatures, the higher level of angels, and then the, the elders, that means the, 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 the elders simply means senior in the Greek of presbyteros, 
means senior. So senior elders. And these senior elders are going to be our worship leaders. Why 24? It's because it is for us to recognize who to follow when the worship uh, uh, event takes place in heaven. So the 24 elders are our leaders, in other words. Huh? So now they hear all the redeemed ones singing. So this is very clear where we stand and who are the various persons in heaven. Okay? Next, next, next verse. I'm going to run really fast. These are the ones who were not defiled. Now, verses 4 and 5 will tell you the kind of people who are redeemed so that we know how to live while we are around before the end. And, and also, then we will know uh, 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 whether we belong to this group, 144,000. These are the characteristics of the 44,000. These are the ones who were not defied by women. Now, what do you mean by not defied by women? Well, uh, uh, the, the cross reference is uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11, where, 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 where Paul said, Yeah, I am jealous for you, the godly jealous. That means Paul is very uh, 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 jealously guarding the purity and the holiness of the saints, okay? Uh, for I have betrothed you to one husband. That means the picture of Jesus Christ being our husband and we being the bride, okay? And that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So virgin means not defied by woman. In other words, the church of Jesus Christ must be kept pure. That means believers in Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus Christ, must have the characteristic of holiness and purity. After we have come to know Christ, we talk about the sins, we ask God for, for, for forgiveness. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. From then onwards, we live holy life. Don't fall into sin again. So when you hear of this leader, that leader, you do this, do that, uh, fall into sin, nah, I tell you, we have to cry. We have to ask God for mercy. Because uh, as leaders of churches, uh, they, are the lead, they, they really must understand this verse. Uh, we, are, we must be presented as a chaste virgin. God regards holiness as very serious. In the in same Hebrews chapter 12 just now, if you read on to uh, uh, verse 14, Hebrews 12, 14 said, uh, we, we have to maintain the peace, okay? We live peaceably with everyone. And then he said, and be holy. Because without holiness, no one can see God. We're all waiting to be, live with God forever, you know. So we're going to see his face. In chapter 22, the last chapter, we're going to see God's face at the time, really face to face. Even Moses at the burning bush cannot see God's face. They thought we asked to see God, only God gave him the back, okay? He cannot see God's face to face. We can only see him face to face at the very end. You will read that. There are seven blessings mentioned in chapter 22, okay? Uh, so, I'm jealous. Uh, I want to present you as a chaste virgin. So that is a, the, the characteristic of purity. And then the, 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 the next one will be, uh, okay. Uh, so the first characteristic is identity with the lamb, the father, all right? That means we, we, we have the name of father on our head. So the first, first, first cross is identity. That means when you believe in Jesus Christ, God, God call you the son. Right? The John chapter 1 verse 12, as long as you receive Jesus Christ, you will have the power, the authority to become children of God. So that the, the, the mark will be given you, so you, on your forehead, uh, uh, when you get to heaven in your new body, at your forehead, the, the, the name of the Father will be seen, name of Christ will be seen. So that's identity. The, the second character is you are uh, you're redeemed from the earth. Okay, uh, 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 back to chapter 14. Uh, sorry, yeah? uh, ch chapter 14. Of, uh, 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 these are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were redeemed. Uh, so, redeemed from, from among men. So, the, 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 they are purchased from the earth. Purchased from the earth. Okay? And then, Purity is the, 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 the virginity part, okay? So we, are, we, are, we, are, we have, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a symbol. There are a lot of symbolism in the book of Revelation, by the way. So this is a symbolism of our spiritual purity. We, we, we live holy lives for God, okay? And then, and then, then, then the, 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 so purity is the third qualification. And then the next, this next line says, they follow the lamb wherever he goes. I mean, wherever Jesus leads us, we follow. So as followers of Jesus Christ, every day you, you pray, we read Bible, and then whatever Jesus Christ teaches, we follow. So we are faithful followers of Jesus. And sometimes he will lead you to a place like the Garden of Gethsemane, where you struggle between your own will, your own desire, and a higher will of God, a higher, the, the tougher choice. And like Christ, we must say, not my will, but your will be done. When you are faced with a very tough choice. That's called following Jesus Christ. So it's not like, you know, sometimes people paint, yeah, it's always uh, 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 like the Chinese say, uh, it's not like that. 
Okay? Of course, God will lead us through finally, but it's normally it's through the valley, through the hardship, through the trials. It's always through trials to triumph. So we don't, we don't, we don't skip the trials. Okay? So we follow Christ. And then sometimes Christ will lead us to the cross. Like Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. And now I live, not I, but Christ lives in me. So when we are crucified with Christ, the flesh, the desires, and all the things of the world will grow strangely dim until they disappear. So that is following Christ. So I call this faithfulness and obedience. The quality of faithful, because you follow wherever he goes, and faithful, just like the church of Smyrna, you know. Jesus Christ said, yeah, you know, they are so faithful, they, they refuse to worship the, the, the image of Caesar. It's called uh, imperial worship. And then uh, they, 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 they are persecuted. So if you don't worship Caesar in, in, in the city of Smyrna, uh, you, you may lose your job, because if you are a government official, you lose your job. And, you, and then the government may, may, may confiscate your property, so you lose your house. So they have to go back to the Palais Kampong, you know, and, and, and plant their own potatoes, you know, and then live simple, uh, poor life. And they are willing to suffer that. So they became poor because of faithfulness in following Jesus Christ. Okay? And, and Jesus Christ said, you are poor, but actually you are rich. That is the message to Smyrna. And that is the kind of faithfulness, okay? So, that is the fourth quality. And the fifth quality, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, one, two, three, four. Fifth quality is uh, 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 they, they, they were redeemed from the earth, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Now, the word first fruit, the cross reference is James chapter 1, verse 18, and Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 3. Uh, the concept of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a, a kind of first fruits. So, that means when we... Uh, uh, um, uh, when God brings us forth, that means like God uh, uh, produces us, uh, reproduction, uh, 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 bring, uh, give us new birth. Uh. So it's another way of saying God give us new birth uh, by the word of truth, that means the gospel message, and then we accept, and then we become first fruits, that means dedicated to God. All right, dedicated to God. And then I think Jeremiah 2, 3 will say, Israel was holiness to the Lord. So we, when, when, when we are born again, we become holy to God. You know, God look at us as very holy because the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us from all sin. And we are regarded as holy to God. And then the first cruise of his increase. So God look upon us as the, 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 the first fruit that come out from a tree your new, new, in your new birth. And then it's dedicated to God. All that devour him, I will offend. I will, uh, uh, God, uh, uh, all that devour him will offend. That means God, God will, 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 will deal with them. And then disaster will come upon them. And Jesus Christ, God will be our God and our protector. Okay? So, so that is the first fruit. That is the, the, the meaning of first fruit. Protected by God, consecrated to God, set apart for God, uh, 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 devoted to God. Right? Now, then the next one is verse 5 of, of Revelation 14. And them, in their mouth was found no deceit. Every time we speak, we speak truth. We read the word of God, the Holy Spirit teaches us, we speak the truth. Okay? So that's called truthfulness, no deceit. Because the, 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 the false cries will come and they will be very subtle, you know. 90%, just like when I see the, 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 hear the cow in China, 90% very, you know, they, they, they quote a lot of scripture, like, 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 like sounds so true. But there's that one, there's ten, the ten percent that's all falsehood. So, but when we follow Christ, no deceit, right? And finally, the 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 the, the seventh uh, point of our characteristic is that in the uh, they are without fault before God. Without fault means blameless. That means we receive a verdict of blamelessness from God. Okay, and 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 that that is because we are forgiven by the blood of Jesus and we've overcome Satan. Uh, by the blood of the Lamb. That is uh, from Revelation 12, 11. Yeah? Revelation uh, chapter 12, verse 11. Uh, then we are overcome. I mean, when we are blameless, we are declared uh, uh, innocent, and we have overcome totally, overcome Satan totally. And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, that means Jesus Christ forgiven us, and by the word of the testimony, that means we are bold to testify of our salvation for Jesus Christ. We are bold to tell our relatives, tell our loved ones, tell our friends, our neighbors, our colleagues who have not known Christ, and we are bold, we are not shy anymore, we are not scared anymore. We will tell them that God loves you, Jesus loves you, uh, He's the only one who can save you, you must believe in Him to receive eternal life. So that is the word of our testimony. And then the, the third point, I, I like King James Version, they put a comma there. Because in some other translations, they put a full stop after testimony. And then they say, oh, they did not love the Lamb, it's like a separate thing. But no. Verse 11 is a whole, a, 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 a 
triple package again. How do we overcome Satan? Three points. By the blood of Jesus Christ, sins are forgiven. By the word of testimony, bold to testify for Christ. And fearlessness in the face of death. Even if we face threats and death, we call on the name of the Lord, ask the Lord to protect us, and if it's His will that we go, just like Paul and Peter, they go into the execution, they go into the crucifixion, they still remain faithful. That's the, the first, because they're going to be a, a, a whole lot of final martyrs. Chapter 13, talk about the, chapter 13, verse 10 is the final martyrs. Huh? Uh, those who will be uh, taken into captivity will be taken taken to captivity. Those who will be killed by the sword will be killed by the sword. That is the accurate reading from the Greek text. Okay? Yeah. So, by the word of the testimony, they did not love their lives to the death. That means even unto death, they don't love their lives. That means, the Chinese say, Mo tam san pa se. Mo tam san pa se. Huh? That means, don't be uh, scared, nah? like, like, like scary cat, I'm very scared of death. And then because of that, uh, like, like, you know, like Peter in his big moment, nah? uh, deny Christ. You know? So, when I was talking to the leaders in, in China, I'm so blessed by the elderly leaders who, who was uh, in Shanghai in, in prison for 17 years. Three times he was uh, 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 kind of sentenced to death. Three times the Lord spared him until we could meet him in, in Shanghai to hear from his mouth how the Lord delivered him. I have no time to tell, but next time you've know, got a chance, you can tell you wonderful testimonies. They, he's an example of you can, you can chop off my head that means my head can be chopped off and fall, my blood can be shed, but I will not deny my Lord. So they put a date for him, okay? We're going to execute you on such a date. But on that day, he wait, 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 nothing happened. I <laughs> won't tell you what happened. But wonderful miracle. And that's why we could meet him in, in Shanghai and tell his testament. But he has, he, has, he has lately gone back to the Lord, a very old elder. Because during the Cultural Revolution of China, he was in prison for 17 years. Huh? Wonderful testimony. And his son came to Singapore Bible College to, to, to study. That's why I met him. And then he arranged for me to, to, to teach in the underground Bible school. Because he, he started an underground Bible school. Okay? All right. So, uh, now the next, uh, next one is uh, 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 chapter 14. We run, we run now. Huh? So, I saw another angel. Okay. I, I won't elaborate. From verses 6 to 12, we're going to have three angels. So, in, in this chapter, you have one blessing in verse 13. Okay? Time already. Huh? huh? Five, 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 five minutes. Huh? Okay. Five minutes. Okay, so three angels here, and then uh, uh, giving different announcements. You can go home and read, okay? But just give us the verse 9. I just do, do one verse 9. Because it's a very important warning of you have heaven in verse 1, okay? New Jerusalem, but also got hell. The third angel announced with a loud voice if anyone worships the beast, that means right the, at the very end, there will be the Antichrist. That's chapter 13, okay? And he will come and pressure people to take the mark. Without the mark, you cannot buy or sell. So you will have to really have a tough time, cannot buy food, cannot buy your roti and all. So, uh, but then you, 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 you don't buy, you have to go hungry, you have to think of other ways. Uh, huh? So if anyone worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on the forehead, on the hand. So the mark, this is, all this is uh, talk about technology, uh, the, the, uh, well, 2,000 years, I mean nearly 200 years ago. This is prophesied already, there will be a mark on the, either the forehead, like facial recognition. You know, when I went to China, I also got facial recognition and then on the right hand, okay? So, but, but it has to come into your, under the skin, okay? Because mark means like piercing of the skin. The Greek word mark has the idea of piercing the skin, okay? All right, so uh, next verse, verse, verse 10, I'm going to go all the way down to, down to verse 12. Huh? He himself, so when we take the mark, that means we succumb to antichrist pressure and we, we, we are scared of death, we, we, we are not faithful to the end. He himself will drink of the wine and now talk about the wrath of God. This is not tribulation. This is wrath of God. Different word, okay? Tribulation, you will suffer. Chapter 2, verse 10. But wrath, you will have, the, uh, have to escape because this is very dangerous and, and this is very terrible. You will drink of the wine of the wrath of God and that is the seven bowls in chapter 15, 16 and all the way down to chapter 19 until Christ comes back and we will accompany Him, okay? Which is part of full strength to the cup of His indignation. He shall be tormented now. This is the thing we must escape. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, 
and then we succumb to the pressure of Antichrist, and God will punish, God's judgment wrath will come, and then person will be thrown into the lake of fire, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, that means Jesus Christ. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day and night. So down in, uh, in the hell, uh, you, you, you can feel the torment, you know, that, that's different from our physical death you don't feel anything but but when 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 you face a second this is called the second death in in chapter 20 talk about the second death huh? uh, he said they have no rest here who worship the beast at his image and whoever received the mark of his name here is the patience of the saint now why the saints mention i mean we may have to face this there will be some believers remaining those will be the raptured ones okay so when they pass this test here are those who keep the commandments of god and faith in jesus clear description of those who remain who will experience rapture okay okay Let, let's move on now chapter 13 like i say i mean verse 13 uh, then i heard a voice of blessed are those that means those who face death like that this is actually a special verse we use in funeral but actually especially in the context of chapter 14 applying to people who are brave, bravely facing death blessed are those who are dead in christ so this is the second beatitude why because holy spirit says they that they may rest from their labors because they work so hard to to, 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 to maintain their survival and to experience the rapture. And, and, but some of them get killed because they refuse to take the mark, all right? So, so, so these are the ones who, who rest from the labors and their works follow him. It means God remember them, their works follow him. Okay, verse 14. Then I look, now, from verse 14, very fast now, to, to, to verse 16, uh, there are uh, four angels. I call them the harvest angels. So, so in this, in, in this book, uh, chapter, in this chapter, you have one beatitude, which you just read, and then you have... Uh, 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 two harvests that is going to come here, two harvests, and then you have three angels who made the announcement just now in, in chapter, verses 6 to, to, to 12, right? Three angels making an announcement, final announcement, and then now you have four angels harvest. So why do we call angels? Although it says, uh, like a son of man, it's not Jesus Christ, although some people think it's Jesus Christ, right? Actually, it's no, no capital S in the, uh, it's, it's a small S, a small M, huh? having his head on the golden, golden crown and his hand a sharp sickle. How do we know he's not, not, not Jesus Christ because he's holding the sharp sickle? He's a harvest angel. And if you read Matthew 13, and no time to read through, huh? Matthew 13, it talks about uh, the, 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 the wheat and the weeds, okay? I'm sure Pastor Ong can, can, can uh, uh, explain to you the parables of uh, the wheat and the wheat in, in Matthew 13 in due course. So, uh, 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 they, uh, uh, Jesus Christ stately, uh, clearly explained the parable there that the harvesters are the angels, people holding the sickle. So Jesus Christ didn't hold the sickle. You guys just give the command. Okay, back to our uh, 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 Revelation 14. Okay, he said, in his hand he holds a sharp sickle. So this is an angel. Okay, how do we know? Because another angel came out. So another means, uh, in the Greek word, the word another means another of the same kind. That means the one that was before is an angel. Now it's the same kind, the same category. Okay, uh, another angel came out of the temple crying a loud voice. Uh, to the one who is sitting on the throne. So chapter 14, the one sitting like a son, simply like a son, looking like a human being. That's all it says, okay? And then he said, uh, uh, he, he cried out to him with a loud voice, trust your sickle and reap. Now, if it's Jesus Christ, how can he be commanded by another angel to, to go and do work? It should be Jesus Christ commanding him, right? So actually, number, chapter 14 is an angel, it is, but he looks like a human being, and it is a small s and a small m. He's like a human being, okay? Because in, 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 the, in, in the ancient time, they, were, the human be, they don't have the word for human being. They will say son of man, son of man, okay? Yeah, so, uh, trust in your sickle, reap. The time has come for you to reap. The harvest of the earth is ripe. So he, he cast, and so, so that is actually the reaping of the grain in Matthew 13, okay? So this is called the grain harvest. Okay, last one, the, the grape harvest now. The two, there are two harvests, I say, in this, in this chapter. Huh? Verse uh, 17 now, verse 17, huh? Uh, another angel right, came out of the temple. So again, this is another, another, another angel, the four angels. I, can, I call them the four harvest angels. Huh? He came out and also have a sharp sickle. Next verse, please. Mm. Uh, another angel came out from the altar uh, of the power over fire. That means it's just rep. Fire means judgment of God. Huh? It's coming out. And he cried out with a loud voice who had a sharp sickle. Earlier, earlier uh, 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 harvest, no fire. But this one, judgment. Okay, so that is the weeds, like the weeds of chapter 13 of Matthew. 
Matthew 13, wheat and wheat, uh, different harvests. Uh. So, uh, so, so this one elaborate on the wheat and wheat harvest. Uh. That's how scripture explains scripture. Because talk about harvesting, talking about harvesting, okay? Uh, uh, so he said, the, the second one, uh, 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 trust, uh, uh, cry out to the sh- one with the sharp sickle, trust your sharp sickle, gather the clusters of the vine of the earth. The vine is to make wine, and it is the wine, the cup of wrath of the wine. Uh. The grapes are fully ripe. Okay, quickly, next one. Mm. So the angel, his sickle, into the earth, uh, uh, thrust the sickle, and they gathered the vine and threw into the wine press of the wrath of God. So the wine press represents the wrath of God. Okay, so this is chapter 14, and so the angel thrust and then uh, uh, threw it into the wine press of the wrath of God, and the wine press was trampled outside the city. A lot of that means when God judged uh, the, the, the world at the end, and this will take place in chapter 19, there will be a lot of bloodshed. So this is the, the, the vision that, 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 that John saw at the earlier stage and then later on in the next vision in chapter 19 it will play out in the form of Christ riding on the white horse and then killing all the antichrist and his and his uh, khakis and all that huh? so the wine press was trampled outside and the blood came out wine press up to the horse bridle that means a lot of bloodshed so that will be that final battle in chapter 19 okay so this is just to help us understand until so far 1600 for long there is a lot of bloodshed and that is how the world will end and then we will then be ushered into the millennial kingdom of chapter 20. Chapter 19, Christ come back, we accompany him. So, I'm, 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 I'm sorry because I added some testimony earlier on. And so this, uh, 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 yeah, because I was very inspired by your singing and your mention of, 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 of the name of Jesus Christ, right? So thank God for his, his word. So the, 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 the final thing is that remember uh, Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 14 where we have our blessed hope that is our blessed hope okay we're going to be in part of the new jerusalem and remember the qualifications how we must live holy lives and be faithful to the lord to the end and not be afraid of death and uh, stand firm on our faith and then christ will receive us thank you yeah praise the lord you can see that she has a lot to share and the time is not there for us uh. that's the reason Maybe there's, this is not meant to be shared in one session. It should be shared in many sessions, you see. So, uh, sorry for that. But I'm sure all of us have benefited much. We have benefited in spite of the fact that there is a time constraint. Thank you very much for being very patient. God bless each one of you.